This is the lecture on linear classification, and my topic is about the support vector machine. My name is Tao Zhang, and I am a PhD student from Cranford School of Management. This course is ECE 662, and uh, if you are interested in my lecture and uh, want to learn more about the lectures, you can visit this website. Okay, my. My lecture is about the support vector machine, and uh, let me show you the outline of my lecture. The first part is about uh, some basic introduction about uh, SVM, support vector machine. And uh, the second part is some explanation of a support vector machine. Which is including the select variables. And uh, Second is about uh, multi-variable, uh, multi-classification. Because as we all, all know, the SVM is fundamentally a binary classification method. And third part is how to solve SVM model. And which is uh, I will transform the SVM model to a quadratic programming problem. And uh, the final part is uh, about the application and because in the programming for example in planning in the MATLAB a very very important thing is how to choose the parameters in SVM for example the penalty and the some gamma in Gaussian kernel so this part is about uh, choosing parameters So, let's do the first part first. Okay, what is SVM? SVM is a... Uh, uh, usually SVM is a classification algorithm and uh, take the most e easiest condition, which is the binary condition. We can put two labels, which is t, we have minus one and one, which represent uh, two classification. And uh, our feature is x, which is ground to rn. We can also write it from r1, uh, x, 1 to xn. This is our feature. And uh, we want to find some uh, boundary classification uh, discri discriminant function, which is why x is written in this way. If uh, y is greater than 0, then the classification result is t belongs to 1. If y is less than 0 or equal, then the classification result is t equal to minus 1. And uh, what we want to do is trying to choose the proper w and the proper b and the maybe some function which can make the classification error is more. The special case of this one is just the x, 
which is written in this way. Here is just a linear classification. And uh, from the linear classification, we can see the idea of SVM is just to maximize the margin. For example, here is two class. This is minus one. And uh, here is class of one. Uh, for example, if it is the linear margin, uh, linear classification, uh, oh, sorry, the separation hyperplane that the SVM will choose it looks like this, and uh, the reason is that he want to maximize the margin here this is the way he choose W and B and uh, the data point that on the margin is also called the support vector and we will also talk about, la talk about it later and here We can say the margin we can write it in this form, which is Tn, which is the label of data xn, uh, xn times y xn over w. This is the formula of margin. We can write it. Uh, also in this way so here for SVM what we want to do is trying to maximize the margin which is our objective function can write them in this way which is uh, maximize one minimize a uh, minimum and here T N time. Because we can from the picture we just draw we just choose this one, this minimum distance, and then take the maximum margin. This is the margin. So the formula is looking like this way. But uh, for this one is uh, uh, W. But for this one, it's uh, really hard to solve it. So, what we can do is uh, find some property which is if we let W be KW and B go to KB, then from this formula star, we can see that uh, if we time k to w and b at the same time, we can see that uh, the margin will still be the same. So we can use this one to symbolize our formula. For example here, we can choose some proper k, which will make this part equal to 1. Yeah. So this is uh, the idea of uh, how to symbolize our formula.
using the freedom of k. So after we done this, our objective function is trying to maximize w one. And uh, from here, we can also see that uh, maximize w one. Oh, by the way, it's on the con uh, condition that uh, Tn times Yn is greater than zero, which means that all the classification are right. You can see this one is also equal to minimize W squared times one over two. You may ask why we want to transform this one into this side because the reason is simple because this one is a convex function, and uh, we can use some property of convex function for better discussion. And later we will also use Lagrangian multiplier. It will also better for our discussion to use it in this form. And uh, what's more, for this one. We can also write it in Tn double transform T plus B, uh, which is greater than 1. Because we choose some proper, do you remember that we choose some proper K, make the minimum of this one is equal to 1. So for other point xn, it will greater than 1, or at least the absolute value will greater than 1. So after time tn, cause the classification are 100% right, so the multiplication will always greater than 1. So our problem is uh, become this way okay so here is the first part of what is SVM actually SVM is trying to solve this kind of problem and uh, so let's move on to some explanation of SVM. For example, I just said that uh, this constraint, which is about 100% uh, accuracy for this one. But however, for some, uh, for some data that uh, it is very often to see this kind of situation that uh, we can't uh, classify our data uh, any hyperplane can classify, uh, classify it with 100% uh, accuracy so what we want to do how to, uh, how to SVM to solve this kind of problem we just introduce a select variable So from here, what we do is just a minus Cn, which means that uh, this point, even though it's on this side, minus Cn, it will on this side, so it will be good. And uh, we also hope that Cn as small as possible for each data point. So we're adding this stuff into the objective function. The capital N is the total uh, testing, oh no, chaining. Total training data set. And the C is the penalty parameter. 
and uh, here is a very important parameter and how to choose it, we will discuss it in the uh, last part of my lecture. So this one is the some traditional form of SVM function and uh, now before we talk about another expansion uh, of multiple, uh, multiple classification, I think uh, we can first move to how to. Uh, sorry, a little bit hot. We will move to how to transform this program into a projective programming, which will help us to solve it very easy. In order to do this, we need uh, using Lagrange multiplier. In order to do this, we need uh, using Magrange uh, Mac prior, and uh, here is how. Uh, let's write down the. Our program first. Here our program is uh, one over two w square plus c summation to c n n from 1 to capital N and our constraint is Tn just to recall what I have right uh, W transpose uh, Xn plus B greater or equal 1 minus Cn and we can tell that uh, to C is uh, some projection which make uh, the our feature space project into another feature space which may be more easy to uh, find the separation hyperplane and uh, here is another one which oh, can say it should be greater than zero it is of course that the slack variable will greater than zero if it is on the other side which is in the right side of the separation hyperplane to see n is equal to zero, but in the wrong side, it will greater than zero, which will make our constraint also be true. And here we are using Lagrangian multiplier. Uh, we can take okay. Never mind. We can use this one, a n, and this is u n, and uh, the Lagrangian we can write it in this form. W b a n u n to c n is equal to. Just write down this part, and. Uh, also minus a uh, minus other constraint a n t n w t c x n plus b uh, n from one to minus one plus c n to n and then also minus mu n mu n from one 
and then we can using the uh, because from this constraint we can see that uh, all the CN are linear independent and uh, also our objective function is a convex function and uh, what's more it is a, a linear combination of C so our program is satisfy LICQ which we also can I'll also call it as a linear independent constraint qualification so it will satisfy KKT condition if it is the optimal point so for a KKT condition we can get uh, first by L by partial W is equal to zero and uh, partial b is equal to 0 and uh, partial cn is equal to 0 from this stuff l is here and take partial of w we can get uh, w is equal to n from 1 to capital n a n t n c n x n And from this one, we can get uh, 0 is equal to n from 1 to n a n t n. And from this one, we can get constraint that a n is c minus mu n. Okay. Uh, by the way, our m of this part is trying to transform our original optimization program into a quadratic uh, uh, programming program and uh, how to do it is using this KKT condition and uh, this three formula and try to animate uh, our variable w, b, and cosn from this formula and uh, we just uh, plug it into this one we can get uh, the dual problem of uh, this Lagrangian which is written in this form we just uh, put it, uh, plug it into our original program And uh, we can get our new function, which is only one variable about a. This is written in this form. And uh, we can write this part as a kernel as n x m. It is a very classic uh, method that which is called kernel check, which is also known as kernel substitution. Uh, we can take this kind of stuff which is look like a dot product to replace it with some kernel we just think it is they are the same and we can replace it with some for example linear kernel gaussian kernel and uh, polynomial kernel we can use many kind of kernel to substitute this part and we will talk about it later and right now this part we can just write it as kxn and xm. So from this formula, if we write a define 
a as a vector from a1 to an and the q is a matrix which the mn part is tn, tm and the k, q, uh, xn, xm we can simplify our this function in this form uh, et times a e is a vector which is uh, always 1 for all the columns and uh, times a is the summation of it and minus a transpose times q times a And we can see from here, this is the quadratic function, what we want. And the constraint right now, from here we can see, it is a n less than c greater than zero. And the summation of a n t n is equal to zero. Here. And uh, from here, this is our final quadratic programming program and uh, in order to we can see from this transformation from the beginning to here if we find some proper A which get the optimal point of LA then we will from this A calculate the optimal point which will minimize the, our original objective function and from here we can find the relationship with, uh, between A and our original project, uh, objective function. Uh, I'm sorry, this, this board is too small for me. Mm. And uh, our optimal after solving this quadratic program problem, we can find the optimal A star. And from this A star, we can get a W star by our formula star star here. And from here, uh, we can see our objective function is, uh, our discriminal function is written in this one star t plus c x n plus b and you may ask how can we calculate b actually it is very easy we can choose any support vector which means that uh, the, uh, the point is on the boundary and by, by KT, uh, KKT condition we can know that uh, the boundary point we have some a n, which is equal. Uh, we can let a i is equal to zero. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, not the boundary. Uh, the point which is not on the boundary, then a a i is equal to zero. This is a common conclusion of KKT condition. And for the boundary point, which is a support vector, which will have a i is not equal to zero, then we can see that uh, Tn times y, uh, yxn will equal to 1. Do you remember the freedom of k? We just choose it and make the boundary point times this one equal to 1 by choosing some proper k. And so we can write this formula. equal to zero and uh, replace W star by this one and in this one for all the okay let me summarize uh, the third part of my lecture what I am doing is trying to uh, show you how to solve a SVM program what I am doing is uh, uh, 
our original objective function of SVM is written in this one minimize see we transform it to a conjunctive programming from KKT condition which is uh, writing the projective function in minimize ETA uh, minus A transpose QA and from here we can solve A which is the optimal we can get A star for 1 to n and from also from the KKT condition we can we have this formula which is W star uh, is equal to the summation n from 1 to capital N A star I T N uh, uh, C uh, n in this one so if we solve A star we can get W star what's more for the boundary point we have Tn times Yxn equal to 1 and from this one we can get uh, Tn times W star uh, 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 n plus b equal to 1 and uh, we can see from here w star is already known from this one and the tn, xn, 1 this is all known so from solving this equation we can get b so till now for the uh, discriminal function y, x, n which is written in this way if we can solve this projective function then we can get uh, the coefficient of our discriminant function which will maximize margin and which is exactly the solution of our SVM program and uh, how to solve it we can use many solver in the internet and uh, the most uh, popular one is libsvm it is a MATLAB package and we can download free from the internet and uh, just using one function we can change the parameters so this is the idea of part 3 and uh, let's move on to the part 4 which is another explanation of explanation of SVM model because as we all know the traditional SVM model is about uh, binary classification which has only two classes but uh, in the application we always face the situation that we have uh, multiple classification uh, multiple categories so in this way what we need is uh, trying to do multi classification by SVM and uh, let me show you two very popular ways to uh, do it by SVM the first way is uh, one versus I'm sorry.
uh, one versus one master or uh, approach, which all we all also say as O V O, and uh, the second one is one versus rest. So also call it O V R. I will introduce these two models about how to how this approach can make SVM so a multiple classification. Actually, the idea is very simple. Uh, for example, for OVR, uh, for OVO, our objective function is still the same. Uh, do you remember that? Which is uh, same. And uh, actually, for this one, we are only choose two categories at the one time. For example, we only choose i and j from total data, total chaining data. We we'll only choose these two, and uh, what the constraint we use is uh, still tn time. This is still the same, but uh, the key point we just use these two categories to chaining our model. So it is still a binary as a classification problem. And uh, once we get this model, we can use it to test the data. And uh, for all the testing data, we, uh, the classification result is obvious that only it is belong to I or it is belong to J. But uh, you can see that uh, we have, for example, K categories in total. Then we will chain how much is it? K times k minus 1 over 2 models. This is some classical uh, results. Models were from k get 2 and we have this kind uh, this much of choice. And uh, from this so many model we also run it on the testing data and we will get uh, for uh, another result for every one point xn. We will get uh, this much of uh, classification results. And we take uh, each of the results as one vote. And we will count, uh, for example, for category i, there is about uh, four, four from this much. Uh, models that uh, say it is category I and about uh, 10 from this match models said it is category J and we just uh, pick up the one with the most vote as the final category oh, not this one, final category of uh, this data point X you know what I mean? for any X in the testing data from this much model, we will get uh, this much votes, and uh, from these votes, we just uh, pick up the category that has the most votes as the category of XN. That's the idea of OVO. And uh, for OVR, it's also very simple because for OVO, we, we can see that. Uh, And uh, for OVR, it is also very simple. Just recall that for OVO, 1 versus 1, we just take I and J, which means that two categories every time from the total data set. And uh, we will need uh, K times K minus 1 over 2, this can, uh, such many of chaining model. 
This is for OVO and for OVR we take all the data set but uh, however because the SVM model can only change the two categories which is binary program so we just uh, take the category as I and uh, not I so actually we have K changing model so for it is uh, and uh, for each changing model we will use it uh, to run it to the every test point x and for x from the changing model 1 to n we will get uh, 1 to k k categories and the k changing model we will get a discriminal function from this stuff and we just choose the highest one which get the value in the discrete function for example j as the category of s this is how OVR works and uh, recall that OVO is trying to take the votes from this one which category has the most votes then we choose that category as the final re uh, results of category of x and uh, so let's compare the uh, common question is uh, which one is better or in other word which one has some uh, less computation time we, uh, based on the conclusion in the bishop's uh, pattern recognition and machine learning book the conclu uh, his, his conclusion is that uh, for large K, O1 versus 1 requires significantly more chaining time than the 1 versus the rest approach. This is his conclusion from PRML. And you can find it in section 7.1.3. However, I have a different opinion. Uh, his conclusion may be based on that for very large K, the chaining model needed in OVR is much more than K, we can see that easily. But uh, actually, we, we just said in part 3, every SVM chaining model is trying to solve a quadratic programming problem. And uh, the computation time of a quadratic programming problem is about uh, to the n qubit n is the data point, number of data points in the training data set so we can see that for OVO uh, for uh, first for OVR each of the training uh, sample use n data point so the total computation time is about uh, n qubit time k k model each one use this time kind of time but for OVO we can see that uh, we only choose two categories from the total data and uh, let's just make the assumption that uh, all the categories have the same number of data points then for each model we only use 2 times n over k this, much, uh, this many points and so to the qubit times k okay. this is number of uh, Chinese models and uh, we can see this one is actually only n cubic over k which is actually less than the OAR so my opinion is that uh, when k is uh, become larger the performance of OVR, I mean the computation time, will significantly less than OVR, which is just uh, the the reverse uh, re kind of conclusion of uh, in PRML. And actually, I run some numerical experiment. The data set is about some text classification uh, data and. Uh, the running uh, computation time is OVR is less than uh, OVO is less than OVR so I think maybe I am right 
and uh, based on other articles that uh, the performance, I mean the accuracy of uh, these two approaches is very similar. So my suggestion is uh, use OVR. This one is better. Has the same accuracy and uh, less computational time. And this is the part of uh, multi classification for SVM. And uh, for the next one, we will talk about uh, how to choose the parameters in SVM model. This is uh, some question concerning the programming in MATLAB, how to choose the parameters which can make the SVM have a better performance. Okay, so let's come to the la our last part. Choosing best parameters. Actually, for all the SVM model, because we are using the objective function, is writing in this form. The C, which is the penalty x, uh, penalty parameters. This one is exist for all the SVM models, so we will choose some C. This is one parameter, and uh, for some SVM model, do you remember we just said that uh, we have a kernel function in SVM, which we can write. Uh, our SVM as uh, y you can write our discriminal function in this way and the k actually is written in this way but uh, by the kernel check we can use any kernel function to substitute this part and uh, the property of kernel function is it is always greater than zero and uh, the integral of this function is one yeah, that's all about the uh, kernel function. So if we choose, for example, linear kernel, which k x m x n is equal to x m prime x n, the separation hyperbrand will be a linear form. And uh, we don't need any more parameters in this kind of situation. And uh, but usually linear separation is not a good uh, hyperplane. We can use some better, uh, maybe better one. Uh, for example, polynomial kernel, which is written in this kind of formula. D is the chosen by the polynomial, and in this one we will have some nonlinear uh, separation hyperplane. This is another chosen of uh, kernel, which is also very popular one. But uh, the most popular one is uh, mm, of course Gaussian kernel. Which is written in this form.
So if we choose Gaussian kernel in the, our discriminant function, we have one more parameter, gamma, to choose. So, in, in one word, depends on what kind of uh, kernel function you are using. Sometimes, for example, linear and the polynomial, you only need the one parameter, which is the penalty parameter to decide it. And uh, sometimes if you use the Gaussian function for SVM model, you have two parameters to choose. The first one is still the penalty, and the second one is the gamma in the kernel function. And uh, now, we are going to say how will the parameters influence the, our results. Actually, in SV, uh, in lib SVM, we just uh, talk about which is a very popular package in MATLAB. If we chain our data set using the function SVM chain, it will, uh, if we don't set up this kind of parameters, then it will uh, using the default uh, parameters. Uh, I think if I didn't remember, uh, it should be one for C and one for gamma and then he will change the data but uh, actually it is not a good parameters from these two parameters and the chaining data we can get a w star and b but actually this model will work not good for example if using default we can only get uh, 40% accuracy, but uh, if we use some way to choose the best parameter, we can improve the accuracy to at least 95. I mean, some, in some case. What I want to say is that uh, these two parameters play a very important role for SVM chaining. So, how to choose these two parameters? What we need is cross-validation. Uh, for example, for threefold uh, for example, for threefold cross-validation, what we do is divide our data point in three parts, one, two, three and choose one as the testing data, the rest is the uh, chaining data, then we will use our parameter from here. This is the grid search. We will test the all the intersection point and we will get our accuracy using this parameter from here we will get accuracy 1 and we, if we choose this one as the test data the rest one is training data we will get accuracy 2 and from here we will get accuracy 3 and then we take an average we will get a final accuracy And uh, from the final accuracy, we just choose the highest one as our final parameters. This is how grid search works. And uh, actually, we have some more efficient way to do it. With the name is uh, nest search. It will be more efficient and sometimes get a more accurate result. In one word, nest search is three great search. The first one is in large scale. For example, we conduct a great search with a large scale and do the cross validation and pick the best parameter with the highest accuracy. For example, this one here. And then we pick the region around it choose a 
ミニレアンスケア